Hello and welcome back to the Attribution Marketing Channel powered by LeadsRx. On today's episode, we're gonna be discussing cookie deprecation, privacy regulations, and how all of those things impact your ability to effectively market and how the ecosystem itself is changing. My name is Lucas Sommer and I'm today's host. I'm the Director of Marketing at LeadsRx and I will be your guide in breaking down these concepts and helping you learn a little bit about what you can do to overcome these challenges. So sit back, stay tuned, and let's get started. Here's a quick overview of what we're gonna cover during this video so you know what to expect. First up, we're gonna define what a cookie is. Secondly, we're gonna break down first party versus third party data and why it's important. We're gonna cover the changes that Apple has made in the past several years, as well as some of the changes that are likely to come in the future. We're gonna talk about Google's entire ecosystem and how they have such a strong hold on the advertising market. We're gonna discuss all the other ad tech players that participate in this space and why they're relevant. We're gonna talk about the privacy regulations that are sweeping the globe and their impact on you as a marketer. We're gonna talk about traditional media and how these businesses are still relevant and are still subject to these privacy regulations and are impacted by the changes. Lastly, we're gonna cover what the impact is to you as a marketer and if you subscribe to the channel, we're going to cover in part two exactly what you can do about it so that you can get more out of your marketing and advertising spend. So let's start out with a quote. Half the money that I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is, I don't know which half. This is a very telling quote because it breaks down one of the biggest challenges in the advertising industry as a whole, and that is the inability to know exactly which of your campaigns are producing which results. Over the past several decades with the advent of the internet and a lot of changes in ad tech, digital marketers and even traditional marketers are now much better at tracking the performance of their campaigns and getting the insights that they need to improve them. Now, this landscape is changing and that is the purpose of this presentation so that you can see what those changes are and ideally make a pivot today so that you future-proof your marketing and are prepared for what's coming next. So what is a cookie and why is it being deprecated? Well, a cookie is a tiny piece of code that simply tracks your browser behavior. Just about every single website you use is going to utilize a cookie in some way, shape, or form, and it's designed to track what you're doing and also give you a better experience when you come back to that website. A lot of times cookies are used to sign in when you go back to amazon.com. It typically remembers what your last session was, it has your cart stored, and it knows what your preferences are so that it can rearrange the world's largest store exactly to your needs. That infrastructure is all entirely powered by cookies and those cookies are used to personalize your experience and target the right information to you. So who needs cookies and who's using them? The biggest players are Google and obviously Facebook. These are the two largest ad networks on the planet and they are absorbing all of these ad dollars from advertisers trying to reach you. The way that advertisers know they're reaching you is by the data that is collected on these cookies. That is why cookies are so important to the ad networks and so important to the online advertising ecosystem Without cookies, it becomes difficult to track and difficult to accurately target advertising messages to the prospects that advertisers are trying to reach. Let's not forget that Amazon is now the third largest digital ad network, TikTok is creeping up, and we can't forget our friend Microsoft. All of these companies are using cookies to track your behavior, learn about your interests, and ultimately help their advertisers target you with more relevant messages. So let's talk about first party versus third party. A first party cookie is a cookie that comes from the web server that you're actually on. So if you were to go to Amazon and sign in, the amazon.com cookie that is coming directly from Amazon's web servers is a first party cookie. A Third-party cookie is coming from a different web server. I'm sure everybody watching this is familiar with Google Analytics, and Google Analytics is in fact a third-party tracking tool. When you have a blog or an e-commerce store and you put the analytics script on your site, you are using a third party to collect data on your customers, on your visitors. That is a third-party cookie, and that is really what is being regulated away and when we talk about cookie deprecation, it's these 
third-party cookies that are really subject to a lot of pain that's coming from regulators and the industry itself. Now, first-party cookies are a little bit more insulated because it's the first-party cookies that help you log back into your bank account, that help give you a good experience when you log into Amazon. The consumer is actually hurt if first-party cookies were to go away. You would have to re-explain your preferences and your login information to every single site that you visit, even for the sites that you visit all the time. This is why first-party cookies are relatively insulated from any of the regulatory and ecosystem changes that have been happening. So you might have heard about ad blockers or using incognito browser windows, and these are basically a method for the consumer to hide their information, not be tracked by third-party cookies, and not reveal who they are when they visit other websites. Ad blockers are going to prevent ads from being shown or prevent your data from being collected as you browse the internet. And incognito mode simply just hides your identity across the board everywhere that you visit. So if you had a normal browser tab and you were logged into Amazon and then you opened an incognito window and went to amazon.com, you will notice that you are no longer logged in and Amazon has no idea who you are. There is a second party cookie, but these are pretty obscure and not as relevant to what the marketing industry needs. Oftentimes, publishers will have relationships with other parties and they enter into a data sharing agreement. So maybe autotrader.com is working with other dealership sites or other sites that are in their own ecosystem and they may or may not share data between themselves. That is a second party cookie. But like I mentioned, it's not really relevant in today's ecosystem unless you're doing something very specific that requires that type of data sharing. Some of the big players in this space are NordVPN. Mozilla Firefox has done a really great job at protecting privacy and giving consumers the tools that they need to hide and protect this data. And our good friend, the incognito window is always there to hide our data whenever we don't want to share it with advertisers or the websites that we're visiting. Let's take a look at some of the changes from Apple because they are very significant and have had major repercussions throughout the entire industry. First up, with Apple's latest software releases on their operating system, they are now hiding email opens. That means marketers used to be able to track when somebody opens an email on their iPhone, if they opened it, what did they click on, what did they view, Apple has completely hidden that data and is now passing back to advertisers the notion that every email is opened and that you don't get to know which of our customers are or are not opening your emails so that you can or cannot track them later on in their customer journey. Up next, you might have seen little warnings every time you open or install a new application that is asking if you want to give that app permission to track your behavior across other webs. Most often, people are gonna opt out of this and when they do so, they are breaking that information chain that advertisers have been relying on and no longer can Facebook specifically track what you're doing when you are not on the Facebook app. In the past, you could have been on Facebook or on Instagram and been logged into the app, but when you left and visited other things on your phone, opened other applications, went to other websites, that data in fact was still being tracked by Facebook and going back into their data model to help them sell more ads to you. Coming up, there is reason to believe that Apple will start to require fingerprints or their technology using Face ID to further protect their consumers and obfuscate their data from the ad networks and the advertisers looking to reach them. This is gonna put further pressure on what is considered cross-domain tracking, and that simply means that if you're using an Apple device, unless you explicitly give the advertiser or the application permission, they are not going to know what you do as you browse the internet and go from site to site or from app to app. This is all relatively recent, but its impact has been tremendous on online advertisers that have relied on this cross-domain tracking to make their ads as relevant as possible. Specifically, this has caused major issues for Facebook and Snapchat who have lost billions of dollars in advertising revenue and who are unable to provide the same level of ad effectiveness for their networks 
because Apple is the device where the Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat ads are installed and operating when Apple is no longer letting Facebook and Snapchat have access to their customers' data, then Facebook and Snapchat have less effective ads. So when you consider the breadth and the scope of what Apple is able to do, they obviously control one of the best app ecosystems as well as one of the most popular browsers in Safari, which has put Tim Cook and Mark Zuckerberg directly at odds. They even went back and forth with a couple of op-ed pieces in the mainstream media where they criticize each other and how their businesses operate. Strongly encourage you to read up. It is quite entertaining to myself and I think you would find the story interesting. So just Google Tim Cook and Zuckerberg beef and you will find exactly what you're looking for. So what about Google? Google is one of the most dominant, if not the dominant player in the online advertising space. And they have announced multiple times that they are killing third party tracking and cookies. But wait, they aren't because they released a timeline, then they moved it back, then they announced that they were going to do it again, and now they announced yet another delay. The question is, why would Google kill cookies in their Chrome browser? Why would Google hurt themselves and their own ability to track, especially when the advertisers that are coming there to pay for Google Ads, Google Display, YouTube ads, and things like that, are getting better data today than they would be getting in the future if cookies were gone. So Google has sort of a conflict of interest because on one hand, they want to do the right thing for their customers, but they are also subject to that sweet, sweet ad revenue coming from the advertisers. So we will wait and see exactly what Google does with cookies, but ultimately the writing's on the wall and they are going to deprecate cookie tracking and go away with third party tracking altogether. Luckily for Google, they have a suite of first party products that really gives them the best data model in the industry. The combination of everything that Google does is really what powers their ability to track and learn everything there is to know about you and then use that data to help their advertisers reach you with the most relevant messaging. This is something that Facebook or Microsoft or TikTok simply do not have. They lack the scope and the breadth of the Google ecosystem that is really feeding their data machine. And that's why even with all these changes that have come out, there really hasn't been that much of a detriment to the ad products that Google provides. They simply have an incredible unmatched ecosystem that is powering a lot of the internet. So they have Google search. They also have Google analytics. I mean, they invented Google Analytics and it is the number one third party tracking tool that is used everywhere on the internet. If you make a little blog or a website, you are going to put Google Analytics on that site and you are giving Google authorization to track and learn about your visitors. Let's not overlook the Chrome browser, which is the world's most popular browser for many, many years in a row. Gmail, the world's most popular email provider for both businesses, enterprise, and consumers. Let's not overlook YouTube, which is the second most popular search engine in the world, second only to the Google homepage. Google has the Play Store as well as the Android operating system, as well as Firebase, which is essentially Google Analytics for mobile apps. So even third-party app developers or folks that use iOS can still install Firebase to extract and pull out the data. And Google, which provides that product, is privy to that data as well. And let's not forget Google Cloud, which is a top three cloud hosting provider. So even if you don't use their mobile apps, you don't use their web apps, and you're not actively using their software, if you host in the cloud on Google's server, they are in one way, shape, or form able to track the performance and data that is coming out of your hosting account. And if that wasn't enough, let's not overlook Nest, which means they're in your home, listening to your voice, looking through your doorbell, and tracking that data, feeding the machine so that they can learn as much as possible about you and how to best serve you advertisements. All of this together just scratches the surface of what the Google CEO has been able to accomplish. So regardless of regulation, regardless of the privacy changes that Apple may or may not roll out, Google is in a great spot 
to continue to collect that data and serve highly relevant ads to everybody in its ecosystem. That's why Google has really some of the strongest ad performance and has escaped relatively unscathed from the privacy regulations that have come down the pike in the last five to 10 years. What about these other digital players and who else in this space is going after marketing data and dollars? There are quite a few of them. And if they can't use cookies, they're gonna use some other new technology to track your information and chase that sweet ad revenue. So Zoom Info, this is almost like the yellow pages for businesses, not as much based on cookie tracking, but they have the information and they help business to business advertisers target their customers with accurate information on corporations. LinkedIn works in the same way. If you wanna reach a particular job type or someone in a company, LinkedIn is a great way to do it. Twitter, although it's anonymous and doesn't have the reach of Facebook, is still great at reaching people based on their interests and what they engage with online. LiveRamp is a company you might not have heard of, but is literally there only to suck down the data and provide matching technology to folks that can validate the visitors that are on your site. So if you connect to LiveRamp, you can know who visitor number 17 is because LiveRamp over many, many years of collecting data from many, many players before the regulation emerged now knows who's who and what they're doing. If you wanna know exactly in full detail who your visitors are and if you have an email address but you don't have their phone number, LiveRamp might have that data and they're happy to provide it to an advertiser in exchange for a fee. What about Apps Flyer? This company exists only to install their technology into mobile apps so that they can track user behavior and provide that data to advertisers and technology partners who need it. The Trade Desk uses cookies and other technology to serve up digital ads and remarketing ads in a programmatic way. The Trade Desk uses cookies and other technology to track user behavior and serve up relevant ads both in a display format, in a media-rich format, and a variety of other formats. If you're being followed around the internet with advertisements and you're not quite sure how they knew that you were interested in that thing, it's likely coming from some of these players. And in case that isn't enough and you feel like you can't escape this online tracking, let's not overlook that Elon Musk is putting thousands of satellites into the sky surrounding Earth to provide you with internet. And I would have to imagine they're gonna be tracking your data. And on their heels is Amazon's Kuiper project, which is doing the same thing. So people all around the globe can access the internet and cut out the traditional providers like Comcast so that they get access to that sweet, sweet first party data. What about the privacy regulation? Now, tech players are not the only ones that are having an impact in this environment. You also have governments all around the world that are participating in this discussion and regulating what you can and cannot do on the internet as an advertiser. So you have GDPR, which operates in the European Union and the CCPA, which affects California and by extension, the rest of the United States. And there's all different types of other regulations that are emerging all around the world with different acronyms, different applications and different levels of liability for those who want to market in those regions. Let's not overlook the traditional media players 30 years ago, these were the only players in the space, and now you're gonna see a lot of new names on this list. Everyone from Apple to Comcast to Sony to Paramount, and finally Fox is in the space of reaching consumers with advertising, and they all have a vested interest in getting the most accurate information possible so that they can target you in the most effective way possible. There are over 176 companies that are operating in this space in the United States alone, but 90% of the media budget is going to Comcast, AT&T, Disney, Paramount, and Fox. So how does it work with traditional media? If you don't have a cookie, there's no cookies on your television. How are they able to track you? Well, OCR, that is the technology that can extract information from images. So when a Coca-Cola advertisement is showing up on your streaming channel that you're watching from home, the advertiser is able to know that at this date and time, you were exposed to a Coca-Cola logo or the information about 
XYZ product, and that goes back into the cloud for them to target you further. Coca-Cola wants to know how many times their logo has been shown in Cleveland, and OCR is the way to do that when you're watching TV. This is answering, what are you looking at? Up next, you have IP tracking, which is where are you connecting? If your device is switching from IP address to IP address to IP address, your motion can be tracked physically on the planet and it can be known where you're getting your data from. If you spend all day in Starbucks, that might mean something to advertisers who are trying to reach you. Maybe you're a college student or maybe you're a solo entrepreneur looking for new office space. Expect to see advertisements about those things because your IP address is informing the advertisers something about you. IP tracking also works in reverse because the IP address that your home is using is typically used by all of your devices. So if you are connecting on your laptop and you go shopping for a blue bicycle and then close the laptop and open your mobile phone, a completely new device, which does not have the same cookies as your computer, you should not be surprised if you see advertisements for that blue bicycle. Advertisers are stitching together your IP address and your other online journeys to know that you are in fact you and that you want a blue bicycle. This is answering the question, where are you connecting? You also have geofencing, which is something that apps ask to share when you're using those apps or your device itself can communicate as you travel around the planet. This is answering for advertisers, where are you going and where do you typically go? If advertisers know where you are now, and your travel patterns, then they know exactly how to reach you with other offers and other advertisements that are subject to your physical location. Last but not least, what are you saying? You have Alexa, Siri, and other players that are actively listening to what you say. They claim to be listening for their trigger words like Alexa and Siri, but the only way to do that is if they're listening to you all the time. Amazon was recently called out for in fact listening to these conversations and using it in their advertising data to help advertisers reach you and to help them sell you more products. If you don't believe me, read their terms and conditions, it's clearly stated. So with all these things in mind, what is the impact on marketers? Well, you're going to have less accurate marketing data. This is already happening now. You do not know who on the iOS operating system is opening your emails and you're no longer able to learn about your prospects as they go from one site to another. You're going to potentially see a drop in advertising performance if you're not prepared to pivot with new data and new information. You're going to start to be looking at a probabilistic as opposed to deterministic set of results. You're going to feel pretty confident that this visitor is in fact a male from Cleveland looking for a blue bicycle but you won't know for sure. You're gonna have an entirely new set of KPIs to focus on, and if you don't focus on these KPIs now, you're gonna be left out in the cold when the marketing industry changes beneath your feet. You're going to have an increasing importance of first-party data and creating your own ecosystem. If you don't track your customers and you instead rely on a third party like Google Analytics to tell you exactly what's happening on your website and who converted and who logged in, you are going to be losing out on some of the best information possible, which is your own first party data coming from your own first party ecosystem. You're going to also be exposed to liability if you're not compliant with the regulations in the areas that you market. If you cannot stay on top of this changing landscape, you really are opening yourself up to a lawsuit from somebody in Germany who never told you that you could email them and you made the mistake of sending them that email. Marketers are also going to be negatively impacted because they simply can't tell the future. If you don't know what those changes are, you're not going to be able to pivot accurately. So what can you do? First up, I would suggest that you like this video, leave a comment below, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you're ready to take the next step, please click the link below to schedule a complimentary demonstration of the LeadsRx Attribution Solution, which will help you future-proof your marketing and sidestep the negative impacts of cookie deprecation. So what questions do you have? Please like this video and leave your questions in the comment section below. 
If you'd like more content like this, please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next episode. This is the Attribution Marketing Channel, signing off.